So now let's talk about configurations. Okay, first thing first is like the company setup. You would be setting up a company, a company hierarchy, a reorganization. So everything in workday is somehow related to a company. Without company, you cannot do anything. Examples are paying to your suppliers. Now, when you're paying to suppliers, obviously they have done transaction with your company, right? They have sent stuff to your company, which you have purchased from them and you would be paying them back. Now let's take an example of customer side. You have sold something using your company, right? So company is in the core of everything in Workday. You purchase business assets for what? For your company. You process accounting journals for what? For your company, be it any other ERP. There cannot be any business with but a company, right? We all know that. So that's why we start with the company set up first. Okay. Now in Workday, before you set up the company, we have a thing called a reorg. Reorganization. In short, we call it as a reorg. What is that reorg? Reorg is nothing, is a place where it captures the audit trail history of whatever transaction in the terms of configurations related to your company or company hierarchy do. Don't worry if it looks very heavy, guarantee you right now, after two days or two classes, you won't even bother about it. Just for today, understand this, that reorg is a place where you can see the activity or the history related to your company setup or company hierarchy setup, when it was set up, when this company was assigned to your company hierarchy, what roles have been assigned to this company, by whom, at what date, what time, like that. Clear with the reorg? The master data basically about the company incorporation like that you are saying. Uh -huh. That incorporation will happen separately, but it's a place where it captures all of the master uh, data related activities. Okay. Let me first show you how it looks like, and then we'll create a fresh new reorg for our batch. So if you want existing reorg, just type reorg here. Okay, just hit OK here. No need to give a date range. And you would see some existing reorgs here. Now, if I want to see this uh, redeem, okay. See, it shows you when this create organization, like a practice organization, somebody has set up a company called practice org. When this was set up, what date, what time, and by whom? That way you can see it. It shows you the history or the activity of your organizations. Clear? Shri and Gauri yes. both clear on this? Yes. yes. Now we'll create a reorg. Okay. Create reorg is the task. Task means to do something, to do some configurations. Now let's think about a very unique name that we can later on because this all we are going to use for at least three, four chapters from now or up to chapter five also. To use this name, a bit of a unique name. So let's give it a name or Twitter. Okay. Twitter Reorg. No need to put this Reorg at the end. It's just like I am putting it up, but you don't need to put it. In real world, nobody puts it, but I am just putting it up here. Okay. Reorganization date, like from which date you want to capture the history of transactions. So suppose you are doing implementation and the company which you are going to set up has been in existence since last hundred years. Okay. Some companies in the US are very old. They are like hundred years old companies also, some insurance companies or some NGOs, yeah. membership based companies. So in that case, what we typically do, that's a workday methodology, but it, it depends. Like if it's a new company, you can put something like 2000 year also, or 
1985, 1996, whenever it was set up. So from I'm telling the system that from now this date onward, whatever happens or whatever I create in the system, capture that in simple words. After this date, if I create anything, capture that in the this place called Rio. So we take 01, 01, 1900 most of the time. Like almost like 99.99% of the time. We take 01019900 only for our implementation phases also. But again, it doesn't have to be 010900. If there's a new company which has been recently set up like 50 years, 60 years, then you would take that year uh, first date. Like suppose that company was set up in 1st of Feb 1965, then you can also take the date as 1st of Feb 1965 year. No need to take 010900 in that case. Okay. It's okay here. Yeah. Right now, see, everything is blank here, but once we start capturing transactions, you will see details here. Now, we'll create a company hierarchy. Are both of you clear with the company hierarchy? It's like a yeah. supervisory organization or superior organization to your company. Again, let me give you an example here. What is a company hierarchy? Now, Reliance Industries or Reliance in typical is the parent company, but they have many other companies, Reliance Communication, Reliance Textiles, Reliance Chemicals, Reliance Petro, Reliance Agriculture, Reliance Pharmaceuticals, Reliance Retail. You know about it, right? Reliance has so many companies in and around the world. So Reliance is the parent company or the top level company or company hierarchy under which we have different companies. So if I want to see a balance at the reliance level or the balance sheet at the reliance level, I can do that because all of these subsidiary firms like Reliance Petro, Reliance Pharmaceutical, Reliance Retail <clears throat> are loading their balances against their parent company, which is Reliance. Clear on this? So it's the top yes. level of your company where they report the highest numbers, like whatever the report, financial numbers you have, you report to that level. So is it clear? What is the company hierarchy? Yeah. Yes. And just like we have Tata, right? Tata, we have Tata T, Tata, like, you know, there's Jaguar also, it's under Tata, and many of the Tata TCS, Tata Consulting Services. But if you look, Tata Group is a consolidation-based company, which does not do anything, which is like a holding company, which holds all these companies, in simple words. Similarly, if you know Google, Google is a product of a parent company. Do you know the name of the parent company? No. Okay. It's Alphabet. I have no idea. Yes. So Google is just a subsidiary form of the parent company called Alphabet Incorporation. Mm -hmm. And Sundar Pichai is the chairman of that Alphabet company, not the Google. We know him by the Google. Google is just the one part of it. Their business. They are earned by many other things. So Alphabet, if you Google it, <laughs> you'll come to know that Alphabet is the parent company whose chairman is Sundar Pichai. And then they have many subsidiary firms. They have taken over many companies, acquired many companies, and Google is just one of them. Okay, to your knowledge, let me add you one more thing. Do you know how McD earns McDonald's? Do you know? By sublating by this, what you call it, franchisee business. Ah, but what they sell? Burgers. Right, that you know. But in real reality, they earn only 10% by selling burgers and fries and this, all this uh, kawara, shawara, <laughs> coke and all those things. Do you know that? Their 70% revenue comes from what? Royalty. No, from real estate. They are a real estate service company. Yes. Again, you are surprised, right? So, Mac yes. is a real estate based company. It's not into like you know, the, this food and all this burger and fries. It's like a very small portion of revenue they generate from this uh, selling this burger and fries. What they do? They acquire the land wherever they want to start the operations. They purchase the land, then they give this land to this uh, franchisee. 
and then generate the revenue from this a uh, monthly uh, rent of this land from the franchisee along with the franchisee cost that's how they earn so that's why you still get the bulk in 20 rupees <laughs> okay yes so they never earn from the selling burgers or fries they earn from buy real estate okay 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 this is just one of the example how the companies earn worldwide and just to add you one one more point here the three big shots are the companies in the world your twitter your tesla your apple and this alphabet have not paid since their inception a single dollar tax to the us government do you know that why so yes <laughs> very interesting but they are not paid a single dollar tax to the us government yet What? they are in the tax saving bracket or something they have got subsidy no 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 <laughs> they have not get uh, it's a very like in depth uh, research but if you love financials and uh, i am in more to that yes yeah, so what they do there is a island uh, in europe in latin america and that is like more of a small country so that as per that country policy whatever the income is generated in the foreign so they just set up a, a very dummy company in this island i'll tell you the island name later on they set up their uh, small company there and then they transfer their all royalties and incomes to that company in that particular island and when you transfer that amount there is nil tax in that country right whenever whatever profit and things you have earned so when you bring that to that company you don't have to pay single tax now what happens you take that money again from them in terms of like your subscription and all those things so there's a particular cycle i will explain some other day and in this cycle you don't have to you show everything as an expense to the us government that you are into losses because you have to that company and so on and that's how they have not paid a single tax in this their inception date and you know they how much they are earning right yeah yes i'll tell you the story later on and how it works but this is how you you can read a book called uh, uh, how to become rich i'll tell you the book title name so in that book, explain the logic how the companies skip uh, paying the tax to the governments or the tax gets never taxed like that okay